I want to share with you why you should actually post bad YouTube videos and how it can actually grow your channel. Even if you have a small channel, this is a YouTube channel I started back in 2022. And these were the first videos that I posted. These were long form videos. The first video just absolutely blew up within the first month. It got over a hundred thousand views. The second video got over a million views and this one did even better and also made me $2,000 once I got monetized. This video also got a couple hundred thousand views. Now, these videos weren't bad videos. These were good videos. These are videos I spent a ton of time researching using my viral framework, finding the right idea, packaging it with the thumbnail and the title in the right way, and actually creating a good YouTube video with good editing, good hooks, good retention, all that stuff. But I started a new business and I don't have as much time to focus on YouTube content. And so some of the videos that I've been posting on this YouTube channel, I consider bad videos, but you can see in the last 30 days, I have two long form videos posted, uh, one here and one over here, and I've gotten way more views than I have subscribers. And this video here actually doesn't even have a thumbnail and it's still performing really, really well. I would consider this a bad YouTube video. This is a video that I wish I would have sent to an editor and would have had it edited much better and much shorter, but all I literally did was just take out the ums and the ahs and try to make it somewhat watchable. And there was really no editing in this video. And even for uh, one of the earlier videos on my channel, I'll pull it up real quick. There was no editing. So like this video right here got 70,000 views, no editing. And the reason I consider this a bad YouTube video is because I have a lot of people that I work with and they overthink their content and they're scared to post a bad YouTube video. But I wanna share seven reasons on why you don't need all the information to get started on YouTube. And if you're just a beginner or you're looking to get more views, why doing this posting bad video strategy can actually help you get more views. Number one, you get better with reps. So the more you do YouTube, the better you are at gonna be speaking on camera, the better you will get at editing, the better you'll get at scripting and coming up with ideas and coming up with titles. It takes reps though. No one just on the first video, when I, when I was showing you this, these videos here, this wasn't my first video ever on YouTube. This was like my, I don't know, 500th video ever on YouTube. So yeah, I was starting a new channel, but it wasn't my first time ever doing this. It took me a ton of time to figure it out. And it took a ton of time to figure out what makes a good thumbnail, what makes a good idea, a title, editing, all of that took so much time. And so don't judge yourself based on what people are doing right now and the results they're getting right now. Look at some of the biggest YouTubers like Marquez Brownlee, even Mr. Beast. Go look at their oldest YouTube videos. They're not good videos. They're not at the level of what they're at today. It takes years and it takes tons of videos to develop your content and develop speaking and all those things. The second reason is Alex Hermosi, for example. He'll say that his content strategy is to do cool shiz and then talk about it. And what I think you can do is if you haven't you know, sold a million dollar company or multi-million dollar company, you don't have a big transformation, whatever it is. Okay. Money, health, relationship, whatever, you know, that is. What you can do is instead of talking about the cool stuff you did, what if you do something cool and then document it? That's one of the easiest ways to start posting and literally use your phone, make it a bad video and just document the process. People find value in you documenting and sharing wins and lessons and all of that. Number three is this allows you to test out different formats. So in the beginning, if you just say, hey, I'm gonna post bad videos, I'm gonna post once a week, twice a week, three times a week, whatever it looks like, and I just need to get good by posting bad videos, it allows you to experiment with a vlog format or maybe pulling out camera, talking straight to the camera like this. It allows you to experiment with more of like a, you could try a video podcast style. Um, there's all different types of things. Maybe you could react to something online. And you can test different things. And this allows you to see what's going to work on your channel. Ultimately, what do your viewers or what do people on YouTube want to watch from you? What topics are they interested in? What formats are they interested in? What kind of titles and thumbnails? All these things. And also, what do you enjoy making? And so I really think making bad videos allows you to experiment, which is such a good thing when you're trying to figure out your niche, what works, what doesn't work. You got to experiment and that only happens when you're posting videos. And number five, 
is bad YouTube videos, bad is subjective. So especially if you have an educational channel like this one you're watching, and maybe you're trying to teach someone something or document something that you're trying to achieve, what you might consider a bad YouTube video, other people might really, really enjoy. And so I just want to encourage you that at the end of the day, you want to bring value to the viewer on the other end of the screen watching your YouTube videos. And that could look like them learning something. It could be motivation. It could be entertainment. If you just make them laugh, you might think it's a bad video. The editing's not there. The This is shot on a phone, right? Like this is shot on my front facing camera on my iPhone, like 13 or something like that. And I'm not using a fancy camera. I'm keeping it super simple, but I know that people are going to find this valuable if I can help you learn something. And so that's what I want to talk about is why making these bad YouTube videos with no thumbnails, with no editing, why they can actually perform well on YouTube. And I want to encourage you to just start posting videos, even if they're bad. And when I got started on TikTok, I have ADHD. So I'll usually start something and I'll get really excited about it. And then like two weeks later, I'll just completely give up on it. And that was the case with TikTok a couple of years ago. But this actually really, really helped me get started and it can correlate with posting on YouTube or just any social media. But I remember at the time, I was super inspired. I really wanted to start a TikTok, but I was overthinking and I was trying to do all the research and find the best way to start. And I remember just going, at the end of the day, there's an opportunity right now for me to just start posting on TikTok. And I told myself this, which is what I want you to tell yourself. I told myself, it's okay to post bad videos. And I actually told myself, not even that. I said, I'm going to post bad videos. That was my goal. That was like my mantra. Everyone should write that down if you're just getting started and put it on your wall. Post bad videos. And the reason this helped me so much is it allowed me to stay consistent and just post something because I hadn't started at all. And I knew from doing social media, doing YouTube, it was going to take time for me to get better. It was going to take time for me actually to learn the style that that would work. And so I just told myself, post a bad video. I would pull up my phone 30 seconds. I just talk to the camera and I'd post it. No captions or auto captions. And like, that was it. And I was okay with it because I had the expectation for myself that it didn't need to be perfect. Bad is subjective. Good is subjective. Don't overthink your content. If you're just starting out. Over time, you can get better and better and better. But in the very beginning stages, some of the biggest hurdles that I see people have is posting their first five, 10 videos. Even their first video, they overthink it. They think it has to be perfect. They have to have the best strategy and all the information. And the reality is you don't. And you never will know the perfect answer. I'm kind of the person who goes with business or YouTube or whatever it is, even health. I'm like, I want to know I'm doing the perfect thing, the most optimized strategy to make this the most effective use of my time. And then a year later, I'm like still researching and I didn't start anything. So the lesson I've learned over the years is you never know the right answer. You have to get started and then you learn as you go and you learn through your lessons. The sixth thing is you learn so many skills from posting YouTube videos that it makes it worth it. So even if no one watches your videos, and you just post for three months, and let's say you post once a week, you're going to post 12 videos, and the amount of marketing you're going to learn, the the confidence of you showing up on camera, you're going to be way more comfortable when you actually sit down to record that 13th video. These skills alone, even if you get zero views on all of those 12 videos, it's worth it. But also, what's really, really cool is YouTube actually will start to push out this video. So as you start to talk about, let's say you started a real estate investing channel and you're gonna, you know, you've done some of this, you wanna help people, you're gonna pull out your phone, start talking about real estate investing. I have someone in my my, um, content academy that is doing this. Here's what I'd say if you're just starting out. Literally just pick topics, you know, niche down, make it real estate investing and start posting these bad videos about real estate investing because here's the powerful thing. They might be, they might be bad. They might get zero views, but now you have a library of 12 videos. So week 13, you post your 13th video. What's going to happen is that video might be better. It might gain some traction. The 12 other videos will get promoted 
to the people who watch your stuff. So if you're watching this video right now and you're still watching, you probably are going to get recommended another video of mine when you open up YouTube again. And then if it's about YouTube or something that you're interested in, you're probably going to click on that. So YouTube is awesome for that. It's like, it like does repurposing ads. It basically finds the people who like your stuff and then gives them more of it, or at least gives them the opportunity to click on it. And so that's why I think post those videos. Once one takes off, having a library is so, so powerful because then people can binge watch your content. And that's why YouTube has a lot of snowball or exponential growth to it because of how that algorithm works and having that bingeable content on your YouTube channel is super, super powerful. So commit to the consistency and you'll learn so much, even if you get no views. And then lastly, I really think this might be the most important thing. When you stick with something long enough and you just do it, it it, it builds your confidence to go, okay, I did it. I just posted 12 bad videos in a row. Those wins for yourself to allow yourself to say after a few videos, you know what? I am a content creator. I am a YouTuber. Those sayings to yourself that when you actually believe them, as silly as it kind of sounds, like it really is important and it helps you to keep going. It builds that confidence and it builds that proof to yourself that you are the person you want to become. Mm. Don't feel like you need all of the answers. Yes, there's certain things you can learn that are going to give you shortcuts. I'm going to call it a shortcut because literally what took me 13 years to learn on YouTube if you find the right information, you could learn all those lessons within months. You really could. And you just kind of need to find the right content and it's all out there on YouTube. And so if you want to click on the video, I do share some of the biggest mistakes that people make that if you keep doing them, you'll fail on YouTube. Don't get overwhelmed. Literally just pick one of those tips to implement into your next video. But even if you don't do any of that, just start posting bad YouTube videos. I love you guys. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.